Hello, Jill. How are you? Hello. Yeah, I'm very nervous standing here. <laughs> I don't think I want to be that <laughs> time. You look, you've got your mate here as well. We've got, <laughs> we've got the trophy. We'll, we'll give you a minute to talk to each other later on. But first of all, I mean, I can't believe it's only, what, 37 days on. Just tell us, how's life changed? I feel like I've been really busy, but doing nothing, I think. Um, I've had a lot more pizzas, a lot more fizzy drinks. Um, it's nice to finally catch up with Kaz, get some time here. But yeah, I think life has changed a little bit, but in a good way. Jill, I know that a lot of consideration probably goes into making these decisions, but why did you feel like now was the right time to retire? I think people who know me probably know there probably wasn't a lot of thought went into it. I kind of, <laughs> I do like to go on the feel of situations and I feel like I'd have been forever chasing a moment that would never have got anywhere near that Wembley one. So I'm still smiling ear to ear. Obviously, I miss the girls, miss the staff, but I think it was the right time. Still, I mean, uh, I couldn't think of anyone uh, more special than you to win that trophy. But I saw your Instagram and you've done 10 back-to-back -back tournaments. What, you've got nine and it, on your Instagram it showed about the failures and the journeys to get to that. You eventually won it as we know, but what was the difference from those nine to this one that you won? You didn't like the post, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to see you. I'm funny though. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it was just really special. I feel like we'd planned for every single moment and I know it just felt like the tournament went according to plan and that's because there was a plan in place for everything. Obviously the performances of the girls, Kiva Walsh, Beth Mead, Millie Bright, they reached new levels and it was just so proud to be part of that. These are the scenes and we all had so much joy watching them. Just tell us what that was like on the pitch with all your mates that you've worked so hard with. It's just the best moment ever. I could watch it on repeat every <laughs> single day, I think. Kind of now I'm still in disbelief. I see them moments and I'm like, was I really there? Something you've worked for all your career. As footballers, that's what you do. So it makes all the hard work worthwhile. And your career, I mean, is one that has been so illustrious and, and long. I think so many people, you know, especially like Ian Wright watching, you can appreciate the amount of hard work that goes into it and, yeah. and the point of your career that you've got to. And it all started, I mean, you two know each other so well and, and obviously you played alongside each other. I want to remind you of a specific goal and you can tell us how important this one was in your career. And this one actually was back in 2009. Um, you reached a final with this goal against the Netherlands. Discuss that with us, what was that yeah, one like? I think that hit off my nose, to be honest, which is <laughs> why my nose looks like this over the years, but yeah. Another very, familiar face in there as well, Karen. I'm trying to gig in on the yeah. celebration. <laughs> a very special moment, but the truth behind that tournament, I hardly played a, a minute, but I was. I made sure I did the bike training and everything, because I thought I might get a moment this tournament, so I think that's a good lesson for younger players, always stay ready. <laughs> Karen, you really did make sure you were in it, didn't you? <laughs> you know, baby face is amazing. Ian, I, I know that you've had so many amazing things to say about Jill, there's so much appreciation for her. You know, the thing is, is that I read something that was wonderful, Jill, and, and it's funny, I actually saw it happen happening when I was at Wembley, I saw you do that last line to line. It made me, when you, when you told the story, that it, it actually brought me to tears because I tried to put myself in your shoes, the amount of work you've done. I remember reading about yourself when you was younger, you played football so much, you even just done shuttle runs just because. So I wanted to know, you know, how come you didn't cry when you've done that last <laughs> shuttle run? Because like, I cried listening to you tell me the story. It was amazing. Yeah, I don't think I'm an emotional person, to be honest. I'm kind of still waiting to have an outburst. It might happen right now, but <laughs> yeah, it was such a special moment. Obviously, I've been known as a box-to-box -box midfielder all my playing career. I've done so many of them runs, like so many other players. And to do that last one wow. at Wembley um, with the gold medal, it was just such it's a special moment. It's an amazing story, Jill, amazing. Thank Karen, you. Karen, just going back and looking at those shots from 2000, Nine. How much has changed since then? Our uh, faces and our wrinkles. <laughs> We've aged, haven't we, Jill? Um, so much. Look at this now. Um, I think we both started and we never envisioned this, did we, Jill? That we st like even in 2009, that gap has changed significantly to when you won it. It was just—it's been remarkable. Everyone on the journey has been great, right? Yeah, it's been so good. And just hearing stories. Obviously, now you're in with the fans and people going. I just couldn't get a ticket for Wembley. The 90,000 people yeah. uh, for the USA game as well. Them stories are what we always wanted to hear. How different is that as well because it's come on so much in, in a small period of time but you are selling out huge arenas huge stadiums yeah it's just even look here this will be a sellout today and to see all the fans here welcoming the players back 
I just, yeah, you can't believe it. But I want to see this at every club game, yeah. WSL games. And now let's build on that momentum and really put women's football out there. Jill, I want to ask as well, because it's not just you retiring now. It's Ellen White going out at, at the very top of the yeah. game, both of you. Tell us what she means to this England side. Oh, she's been amazing. The, the ball's there, she'll finish it. Uh, top corner, bottom corner. But the thing with Ellen, and I'm sure... Kevin will agree, training with her, though. yeah, week in, week out, I think this is a sign of things to come, but <laughs> she's such a professional in the gym, she does every single exercise, and that's why these moments aren't flukes for her. You know something, I think that, um, you know, I know she had a year left, and, you know, I think to, to drop, you two dropping the mic like that, you know, was amazing, but like, I think that it's going to be very difficult for us to replace the calibre of striker she is, and you're hoping that in Ebony, Ebony Salmon, in, in Beth England, you know, and even, you know, Rachel Daly can maybe play up there and, you know, Alessia Russo, you're hoping that we can find a way of playing because she was so important and so integral to what we're doing with the closing down, with the being in the box and finishing in the box. So she is, for me, you know, it's, it's a shame. It's a shame to see her go, but she, as a servant, she could not do any more. She couldn't do any more. I'm sad to see her go, especially with a year left. Have you spoken to her yet? Because I know that you're saying you're not a very emotional person, but the two of you, have you had a chance to sit down and discuss it with each other? I spoke to her briefly saying, is there any work out there? <laughs> <laughs> but no, Ellen's fine. We didn't discuss it uh, prior to it. I seen her have a few emotional moments on the walks round to the fans after yeah. the game, so I kind of sensed it. But Ellen is a very private person, so she announced it on the Monday, me, Tuesday, but we didn't talk before that. When you're talking about work and, and career paths, I reckon we've got a, a good idea of one thing that you could potentially do. You're obviously standing with us now, you're used to the cameras, and you're perhaps used to interviewing as well. I just wondered where you got these interviewing skills from, because this is quite difficult to get, actually. And you're uh, looking at things like that microphone. <laughs> that microphone. Over that day, I think so. <laughs> Maybe we'll get a little bit more from it today. <laughs> well, you mentioned there about career path after football. Is coaching something that you'd like to do? Yeah, I really want to coach. That's where I get my happiness, my buzz, and I really want to help as well the next generation. So hopefully coaching, but for now I want a little bit of a rest. I think yeah. for yeah. Some, someone with your experience, Jill, I mean, I learned so much from you and throughout the career, it would be criminal that you wouldn't be go back into the system of some sport some sort and like educate the players because your knowledge is just so invaluable i yeah. think what's important though it, 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 the way the way jill is and her, her personality is that they've got to understand that they've got to enjoy it because i every time i see jill scott she's looking like she's enjoying every moment of it and that's what yeah. we need the kids to understand now you've got to enjoy it you've gone in and you've got a world-class coach and, and she won the euros before and she's now done it again with you guys how much is, is she there for you to learn from as well in your career path if you want to go into coaching? Oh yeah, 100%. I learned so much from this Euros journey, looking at how she is with the players, how she is with our staff. And it's no secret that the main reason we won because of Serena and the way she is with everyone. So yeah, I think if I do get a job in coaching and management in the future, she'll definitely be on my call list. <laughs> and what do you think of this team? Because there are so many incredible young women coming through as well that have got to learn from the likes of you guys that you could say quite quite honestly have had it a lot harder. So what does the future hold for this team? Yeah, the level of this team is incredible. Kiva Walsh, day in, day out in training. I watch her. The training session used to stop and you give her a standing ovation yeah. for some of the stuff that she do. So yeah, I think they're heading in the right direction. Obviously they've got a gold medal behind them and I'm so excited to follow their journey yeah. now. You've actually got quite a big job tonight, haven't you? Because you're going to be walking the trophy wow. out onto the pitch. So I don't know how nervous you get in front of big crowds, but you mentioned it, this is a sellout and you've got to do that job. Just don't drop it. <laughs> whatever, you, whatever you do, don't drop it and don't interview it either. <laughs> but you get to go and put your feet up for the first time, really, since you've won the Euros. You get to watch your team, the Lionesses, in front of a home crowd and you don't have to do a thing. So congratulations, you have absolutely earned that, Jill. Enjoy your retirement and we hope to see you back here interviewing, being interviewed and in coaching as well. Congratulations, Thank you. Jill. Nice one, Jill. Thanks, Thanks, so well earned. Nice Thank one, you Jill. so much. Uh, Jill Scott there, <laughs> the legend of a